Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the Big Gray Shop. Today's project. This here is a relatively unusual piece. That's a Dana 71 axle. It's out of my parts truck down there in the barn. You've probably seen it sitting beside the building in a lot of the videos. So what I'm doing is I'm swapping this axle underneath of my crew cab because that axle has 307 gears and the original gas axle in this truck's 456s so it's uh, flat on the floor governed in order to run 70 miles an hour which isn't terribly efficient or really nice on the engine so what I decided to do is totally go through and rebuild this thing because it's an unknown quantity and uh, let's see this thing do is just put all new stuff on it and put it under the truck and don't have to worry about it you know, it only takes about uh, less than $300 to put everything on new wheel bearings and brakes and all that stuff on here so that's what I'm gonna do I got uh, pieces over here I've already taken it apart power washed it all and got it cleaned up sprayed some fluid film on there to keep it from rusting since it's out here raining while I'm working Over here we've got boxes of goodies, all new brake hardware, and wheel nuts and studs. Probably won't need them, but you never know, I might tear them up getting them out. I was supposed to get two brake drums, but uh, there's only one in the box, was all of us in here. So, hopefully, they'll send me another one. They shorted me, so that's a bit of a hold up problem. There's the one that was in the box. The new shoes. And then a box of Timken bearings and seals. So, start getting this some more tore apart and check everything out. I'm also going to try and set up and check the run out on the, the uh, wheel hub assemblies to be sure they're as true as possible to eliminate vibrations. Uh, back in the day, they didn't do a real good job on that, I don't think. So, I'm going to check them out while I got it all apart and see how it is. So I'm going to get it tore down some more and I'll bring it back. All right, so I put the hub back on here to check it out. And it's, it's pretty much within three thousand run out on the flange where the wheel bolts i'd say that's probably within spec uh, this is really rough turned on here so the the grooves it it picks up probably three thousand out of the groove because it's turned so fast same thing on this part down here you can you can see where they backed the tool off and the tool drug spiraled out when it was coming out because they were cutting it so fast with so much pressure that uh the tool was deflected and when it spun back out it left marks in it where it basically cleaned out when it was coming out there's some jaw chuck marks must have had a six jaw on this nice little witness marks just saw a step here too like actually three steps step up here where the wheel fits and then a little bit looser and then real loose out here so let's check this face i'll have to get a different indicator so i can clear this stub all right so we got the arm on the indicator here to reach over in there on that ledge Within like five air, probably at most. It's one little dip there. It's a little rusted out hole. But I'd say that's acceptable too. I wouldn't get too crazy about any of this unless it was 20 or 
or more out, probably. Uh, man, the rubber tires are not that true. All right, so the hub passed inspection. Now I've got it back off, and I've got all the brake parts torn down, cleaned up. Uh, painted my backing plate and this end of the axle. Of course, the brake line twisted off, but this isn't the right brake line anyway, so I'll take the one off this truck, put back on it. Got new hardware here, got a new slave cylinder, the uh, brake adjusters, new springs, retainers, cables, brakes. Uh, I assume they know, they figure that you must know how they go because they're not marked right or left. You got to match them up. They all come in the same box. The Chinese, I guess, don't know what left and right are. I think they had a sticker, but they painted over it, so it doesn't do a lot of good. These are Bendix brand, and we'll try them out. I had got Wagner's on one of my other truck, Thermal Quiets, and uh, they wear like iron, but they stop like shit, so... Uh, I'm more of a fan of having uh, brakes that wear out that will stop you than having brakes that never wear out but they don't stop. So uh, I'm going to try these and see how they do. The truck now, I don't know what brakes it's got on it, but they work really good. They're probably factory, so uh, probably something you can't get anymore. But uh, it does stop good, so I'm hoping it still stops good when I get done. So I'm uh, Get, got my never sees here and I'm gonna never seize up these bolts and studs and the bleeder screws and all that So that you don't end up with it twisted off like that. I even heated it up with the little torch there But it wasn't any good the cheap line there just twisted off It's actually split first and I was like well screw it it's split so twist it off and go on quit messing with it So I start putting it back together and I'll bring you back You'll see here the automatic brake adjuster cable was just about to give it up there. Uh, that's why you replace all this stuff. So it doesn't cause you troubles in the future. Uh, I got this hardware on this side here. Got the master cylinder set in. And I just clean all this up and never see it. and uh, put this back together. All right, so what I like to do, see using brake spring pliers, is put this one side on, the other side's hooked in, and, and get my plunger lined up on the callet, on the piston. And then pull it in. like that All right, that's good. I'm going to put the old adjuster back. This is a forging, forged end. And it feels like it weighs twice what this uh, replacement one does, which is all milled and coated. These were still good and free, so normally a lot of times they're froze up and these teeth are worn, but this one looks pretty good. So I'm just going to put it back and have this as a spare. Important not to mix these up from which side they go on, whether they're right or left. Or... Got to keep that straight. Well, that's that side. All put together. So now I gotta build the hub. 
Okay, so new drum is together on the hub. Got the seals in, new bearings in. Bailey gives it the approval. It's good, Bailey. Wag your tail. Anyway, so put it on the truck. Okay, so I put just an ever so slight amount of this 638 retaining compound on the spindles. Uh, the bearings on these trucks when they're heavily loaded and this shaft's flexing, and yes, it does flex under load, uh, they tend to fret the spindles a little bit, and sometimes even they, they wear down and they start to spin on the spindles. So that gives it just a little bit to make it a more solid fit because it's just a slip fit up on here. It gives it a, a little bit tighter fit and something to chew on instead of the spindle. So I'm going to see if I can get it slid on here. And it may interfere with this tailgate. Might have to pick this up. Hmm. thing here is to have everything clean inside you don't want trash in your new bearings it's never good The fact that it rolls and gets tight tells me that this drum's not centered. Let's see about this run out on this drum. Yep. Fifteen thou run out. That's high right there. Let's get a masher. When first you don't succeed, get a bigger hammer. Well, I'm liking that. It's like three right there. 
Now what I want to do is get uh, put two of my nuts on here and impact and draw it down good. Well there it is, one half rebuilt. Parking brake all done. Drums on, running true. If you've got one of these trucks and you've had brake work done on it, and you got vibrations in the rear end, you may want to take it loose and uh, back the studs off a little bit because the holes in the drum are oversized from the studs so you can bang that rotor around on it and then tighten it up. And of course, when the wheel hardware is tight, it's not going to be able to move around because it's clamped. But as far as putting it together, uh, it's got to be tweaked a little bit if you want it to run nice and true. So that's why I did the banging around on it. I got it down within less than five thousandths now. So that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, I always like to be better, but for factory stuff, that's probably as good as it ever gets. Most of the time, their tolerances are really loose on factory stuff so that they can build, mass produce it, and they don't have to check any of it. You know, the machines can sit there and crank these things out all day long, and uh, they don't need a machine insert to operate it to be sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And if the insert gets worn, it's no big deal. It's still going to work. So that's it. So that's it for this project until I get the other brake drum in since they shorted me. So once I get that done, I'll be able to get this other side put on, and then it'll be time to swap it out in the truck. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hope this will help you all out sometime if you ever need to work on one of these, and I'll catch you later.